All right, guys, today we're going to talk a little bit about gathering in Villagers and Heroes. First, what you need to know is that there's eight different types of nodes which you can gather from. Those would be wood trees, fruit trees, meat fish, oil fish, metal, mushrooms, beetles, and silkworms. Every single place where you can gather is called a node. And Every single different node is a different level. See here we have a level six pine tree. What this means is that you have to be at least a level six in plant lore to properly gather from this tree at a regular rate. You level up your gathering skill by doing the actual gathering. So the only way you can progress is if you start at a level one or two tree and actually do some gathering the way you gather is simple you just click on the node and everything else is manual you don't even have to click you don't technically have to even click on the items you they just collect themselves but it's more satisfying that way and once you collect enough material from a node you begin to gather experience and level up there's two factors when looking at what rate you'll gather at a particular node. There's your current level of mastery in the specific kind of node, which is plant lore in this case. And then you have the level of your tool that you use to gather. Every single one of the four main kinds of gathering requires a specific tool to take advantage of. In this case, you have pickaxes, which are used for the metal, fishing, which is used for the two different types of fish, the magnifying glass, which is used for the two different types of bugging or grubbing, as the case may be, and the scythe or sickle, which is used for the three different types of plants, which are the mushrooms, tree wood trees and fruit trees these tools need to be bought at a tool vendor and need to match the relative level of your plant lore or mining or fishing or bug lore you need to be at a level 50 plant lore to equip the level 50 sickle and what the sickles and the pickaxes and the fishing rods do is that they allow bountiful harvesting which is which increases the general rate at which you um, gather. If you don't have bountiful gathering or bountiful harvest equipped on your character for that specific level, you're not going to get a lot out of the node. The way you level up these tools is you have to buy them from a tool vendor and it can become pricey. So, my advice is you don't necessarily need to buy the new tool whenever the new ones become available. I think there's new ones every five levels. I buy my own about every level, every 10 levels or so. Um, it's up to you. But the bottom line is that when you purchase and equip one of these tools, you unlock bountiful harvesting and that enables you to actually get the most out of this tree. If I didn't have such a high level sickle, I'd only be getting like one of these and there and it would be slightly slower the rate. Probably the last important thing to note about gathering is that every single gathering skill has three or more gathering items that are associated with a specific tool. And these, while equipped, lessen the time it takes to gather and also ups the chance by a slight percent that there'll be other items that you get from gathering. You saw that I just got that gemstone from gathering that's a that's a rare drop you can possibly get gems and other items 
anytime you harvest so there's a small percent chance these items kind of up the chance and also speed up your harvesting so there's an uh, uncommon a common and a rare version of each item for the sickles it's the whetstones for the bug lore and the magnifying glass it's bug luring nectar for fishing it's different worms there's actually different purchasable versions of all these items but for whatever reason you can't get the rare fishing lures from random drops i don't know why that is but anyway and you get mining oil to up your pickaxe everything in this game when it comes to um managing your items is also a time management thing it's like how much time do you want to trade for the benefit that you receive so if you're playing the game properly and smartly you'll rack up these items and use them um at the specific times the other thing that should be noted about these arrows that kind of flow in a specific direction in this game it's called the cycle of life what this means is that you're supposed to generally speaking if you're playing if you want to maximize your gains you're supposed to harvest in this direction so when you pickaxe at a metal node for example the item that you have most likely a chance to receive as a random drop are the whetstones which enable you to have faster plant lore when you mine at a tree you have a chance at getting bug oil when you are grubbing you have a much higher chance of getting worms and so on and so forth so the point of this is that if you want to conserve your items and use them most efficiently and not run the risk of not having any of these items your best bet is to start with one like let's say plant lore and do this first and then gather some bug luring nectar from your plant luring adventures and use that as the next node to gather from and so on until you can start kind of a chain to get these items i do recommend that the lowest levels at first you don't use the, the any of the items though and just save them up because and these higher levels where you need a lot of these items and you know time is kind of precious and you're mining for like 300 you know full stacks of a certain fruit or something you're going to want to have hundreds of these items on hand so that you can just kind of set it and forget it and not have to worry about running out i mean you can always buy more but money is also precious in this game so like you don't necessarily want to just toss it away on buying just random oils and stuff especially when they're free if you know what you're doing obviously as you can see here i have you know over a thousand mining oils a thousand worms like 700 whetstone and stuff and 2000 bug oil like that just comes from conserve, conserving your resources properly. So there is that. Now let's go see if we can track down a tool vendor so I can show you guys what you have to do to purchase a new mining tool. Let's see, the tool vendor is over here. This is just in Arden City, by the way, your mileage is going to vary depending on where you are. There's a tool vendor, I believe there's a tool vendor in Summer's Hollow, which is the starting zone. And I'm pretty sure there's a tool vendor in Lake Kiwa, which is a mid-level um, gathering site. But for all, all intents and purposes, you're going to be spending a lot of time in Arden, so get to know where the vendors are for various things. You know, so we talk to this NPC here and you see she sells every level tool and they appear every five levels so you can see once we get into the 50s we start getting these X's over the item which means that I can't equip this item I can't use it because I don't have level 50 bug lore this is a level 50 item I don't have level 50 bug lore yet so I can't even equip this so buying it right now for me would be useless. Here is how, I don't even have any inventory space like that. Let's see, get rid of anything. 
plop this in here. All right. What am I to see? Here's how you check what item you're in need. So, like, if you're looking at this, it doesn't really necessarily tell you what level your currently equipped pickaxe is. So, to do that, you go into your skills and check here and hover over the item. And you, as you can see, I have a 55 sickle, a 40 magnifying glass, and a level 50 fishing rod. I think it's probably time for me to level up my magnifying glass. I think I'm at high enough bug lore. But to check that, you can come over here and see, I'm level 47 bug lore. So I can get the next level of magnifying glass. So come over here, find the next level magnifying glass, which is the opaque silver magnifying glass at level 45. As you can see, it takes two gold and 50 silver. We'll buy this for two and a half gold, and it doesn't automatically equip it. It goes to your inventory. To equip it, you have to go back to your skills and replace it. The magnifying glass item blocks or pictures look the same. So just if you really want to check and your OCD is kicking in, you don't really think that equipped. You know, if I hover over the one I have equipped, it says 45, and this one says 40. Unfortunately, unlike a lot of items in this game, the harvesting items do not sell for anything. So when you sell it, they always just sell for one copper. So as you can see, for those of you who have just started the game, you'll know this is kind of the first major zone you're in. And you can kind of see, well, there's not really any places to mine. The little lake back here is some ardent bluegill, which are the first level meat fish. But besides that, there's no place to actually get items here which is like okay like where do I go what do I do type of situation so I will show you where to get your first harvestable items if that's a word we have to truck ourselves to Dagmar Strand which you'll be spending a ton of time in in the first leg of the game I think I still have open quests there. I'm, I don't, I don't doubt it. All right. Now, as you can see here, there's a little bit more to work with. We've got a few apple trees in this orchard to the east. We've got oil fish and meat fish in this lake area. This is where you get your tutorials for your other harvesting quests. There's a bunch of pine to the north here, and to the south is a giant copper deposit. And there's cooking stations and other places all around this area where you can essentially practice your harvesting. For example, let's go to the copper mine and really attack a node and harvest away. And I'll show you how it kind of works and what harvesting is like when you turn off all your items. Okay, so here we have the highest level copper node, I think, in this area, which is level 10. Since I'm level 48, this is the one I should choose. So I will switch this off if I can. Oh, yeah, there we go. So I don't have any... Oh, I have... My inventory's full. Let's, um, get rid of this. Uh, what don't I need in here? It's a random piece of armor. Okay. So as you mine, you get, especially at nodes, at mining nodes, you tend to get a lot of gemstones. They're probably the most profitable. And see, here's some mining oil. So not only can a node give you what's ahead of it in the cycle of life, but it can also give you more of what you're using to mine, especially if you don't have any running at the time. So if you don't have any of the oils running when you're mining, you're gonna get some extracted mining oil, like, you know, left and right. Say it's just throwing it at me. I don't have anything on i don't have any buffs on or anything this is just the game doing this so at first when you're first starting out if you're desperate for some oil or worms or anything just turn off your supplies and your 
bound to get some just to start off. But you see, I'm at a high level and I'm getting like one or two ores. Not really much going on here, right? I'm getting a lot of oil though. Okay, so I need to turn this on. Now you're going to see I'm going to mine slightly faster, but I'm not going to get as much mining oil. At least that's the theory. See, I'm not getting as much oil, but I'm getting a sl slightly faster rate of return. Now we can kind of, if we want, we can kick it up another notch, and I can use the uncommon item, which should give me slightly more return and even some whetstone and maybe some gems. Like, you know, nudge, nudge, hint, hint. Yeah, there we go. Trying to make bank here. There's some mining oil. Another topaz. Motes of Yorick, which you can get from any node. And what Motes of Yorick do, I'll be discussing this in another video, but Motes of Yorick speed up your crafting, which is the other side of the crafting, harvesting um, coin in Villagers and Heroes, but so you can see we're, you know, we're getting a ton of ore now because we have our uncommon item. Now, see, I only have 27 of these really good items, but you see how it'll just throw items at you like that, if that's equipped. I don't want to waste them all on this. As you can see, I only have 24, so I don't have that many, but if you have an uncommon supply, you will get a ton of bang for your buck when you're at a node, so keep that in mind. Alright guys, so that's how mining works. Now, keep in mind, you can continue to mine at a single node for a while, but you can exhaust a node. What'll happen is a node will literally go dead, and you won't be able to mine at it for about 20 to 30 minutes keep in mind that it'll only be dead for you you'll you'll be the only one that can't mine at it i think it's a basically a way that villagers and heroes regulates its harvesting economy there the game relies on a kind of balance between how many players have x amount of items at any one given time because the ore and all the things you can make with it like the wood and everything are so important so the way the game regulates this is by not allowing a single player to just continuously mine a single ore or a single node. This also prevents hackers from mining using a bot to mine at a single node for you know hours and hours and days and days. You can only mine at a single node, I think, for like max of like 15 minutes or something like that before it'll go dead on you. So shake up your um, mining habits. By switching around you don't always have to mine at the highest level node that you're capable of mining at especially if you find what's called a plentiful node which is what we're going to look for right now i'm going to go to let's see if we can find one let's go to like kiwa a plentiful node is a rare occurrence but when you do find one the node in question will have a buff on it that basically makes you get more items for every second of mining time. Let's see if we can find a plentiful node so I can show you guys what one looks like. Like Kiwa, by the way, has all the, all the goods that you want after Arden. It's even got pine, I believe. Yeah, it's got pine, it's got oak, it's got tiger eels. Plums. Does it have apples? Yeah, it has apples. It's got all the goods. It's got all the goods. Let's see. Trying to purposely find a plentiful node is like finding a needle in a haystack. Most of the time, you're not going to purposely be able to find one. You just run into them by happenstance. Like, here's the tin deposits. What, what do you think? You're going to find one here. Ooh, luck is on our side. Here is a plentiful tin deposit. When a plentiful mining node is active, you'll notice it by these little gems kind of and sparkles hovering on it. 
when you and the purple text is the signifier this level 20 tin deposit is going to absolutely spit out items for me i'm not going to be able to collect any of them i'm going to discard this pine here we go now you can see see it's giving me like four or five a pop i can't carry that sapphire this is it's it's a it's a shame i can um I can discard this ring. I don't need buy ring. Yeah, as you can see, when something's when a note is plentiful, it's very generous with the amount of items it gives you, and there's also an increased chance for mining supplies and other stuff. the The best harvesting tactic is to find a plentiful node and pair that with your superior crafting supplies or your mining supplies, so that when you yeah see now like you that combination uh, superior to that, superior to that. now we're you know this is the big leagues when you can oh well here's the type here's an example of a rare item that can drop that it doesn't fall fall into the in, any of the other categories this is a lucinium this is this is like a buff item there's different types of these rare items that can drop that you can only get from harvesting. So harvesting in villages and heroes is not just for, don't think like, oh, like I'm never gonna do it because it's just crafting and I'm not a crafter, I'm a fighter or whatever, that you can get a ton of really awesome loot by taking advantage of the harvesting system in this game. For example, this Luckinium. It's only a level 15 Luckinium because I'm mining at a know that's way under me because tin is only the second tier metal and i'm at like the fourth tier i'm at silver or something <laughs> but this lucinium what what this does is that when you activate it your next six kills the enemy will drop in as it says an enormous amount of loot what it does is it basically turns your next few kills into a loot emporium Luckiniums are amazing if you are in need of a quest item like if you're trying to kill a certain amount of mobs and they are dropping like a quest item that you need to collect like 10 of or something you just toss on a Luckinium and they'll just throw them at you and it's the same thing like they'll drop a ton of pelts a ton of other items gems and all and whatnot silver so this item so just because you're not the crafting sort or you don't intend to craft armor or whatever you just want to buy it or loot it harvesting does have its benefits for all styles of play because this is the only way the only main way you can get luckiniums is through harvesting so keep that in mind that about covers all the major aspects of harvesting specifically anyway guys if you like the video Remember to leave a juicy little like, and we'll be back with more content soon.